what brought me to carnivore was this little podcast. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's called the Joe Rogan experience. And there was this doctor <laughs> named Dr. Baker on it. I actually convinced myself that I liked turkey bacon, yeah. that I liked all of these things and I, that I didn't like regular bacon. And then when I started carnivore and I tried regular bacon, it was like, like the angels were singing and then I couldn't put turkey bacon back in my mouth after that. I, and I, <laughs> yeah. and I haven't missed a vegetable since I started carnivore. So I didn't actually love vegetables as much as I thought I did. <laughs> no. Good afternoon. We have Jess or Jesselyn. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Well, where, where are you located by the way? What part of the world are you in? I am currently in Okinawa, Japan. Okay. Is military bringing you there? Or what brought you to Japan? Yes. My husband is army. He's SF. Okay. So that, that's, uh, I was going to say, cause most, most, most people I know that have been Okinawa, that, that is a reason they're part of the military. So well, wonderful. Well, uh, how long you been there? I've been here actually a couple days ago was a year. So <laughs> how, how are you like, how are you liking two it? Years ago. Uh, it's okay. It's definitely a lot different than mm -hmm. the United States. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a culture shock, but it's a cool experience. I definitely will be ready to go though in two, in two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you may get more fond of it when you're there. Where, where are you from in the U.S.? California, Southern California. Okay. What part? Temecula. Temecula. Okay. I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. I've got some nice, uh, uh, I guess wineries and bed and breakfast type place. I, I spent, spent one I think one weekend up there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I was in uh, Orange County and uh, Laguna Hills and Dana, Dana, Dana Point for a while. So I'm familiar with that area. Well, tell us, uh, I guess, tell us a little about yourself. So what, 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 what brings you to us? I guess some sort of health improvement, I'm assuming through diet, I'm, I'm guessing. But go ahead and tell us your story. Yes. Yeah, so I am a carnivore. I've been carnivore for almost three years now. It'll be three years in January. I started World Carnivore Month in January, 2020. And what brought me to carnivore was this little podcast. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's called the Joe Rogan experience. And there was this doctor <laughs> named Dr. Baker on it. <laughs> I'm vaguely familiar with that one. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, your podcast with Sean or with Joe Rogan is the reason that I'm carnivore. So thank mm -hmm. you very much for changing my life through that. Uh, and my husband actually showed me the podcast. I was so frustrated with not being able to lose weight. I had some health issues that were going on and I thought that that was just the cards that had been dealt in my life and I had to just deal with it. And my husband started doing some research and he found that podcast episode and said, Hey, this kind of sounds like something you might be dealing with. You, you should listen to it and see if you want to give it a go. And I listened to it and a lot of the things you said resonated, even though it went against everything I'd ever been taught. And I decided to, we decided together actually to do it for World Carnivore Month. And after that, I kind of never looked back. Yeah, interesting. That's, that's, that's good, good, good stuff. So, I mean, you said you, because I mean, a lot of people are overweight and not everybody goes carnivore. I mean, most, in fact, most people don't. What, I mean, what other kind of issues were going on? If you don't mind sharing that, that you said, it sounds like you, it's some other, what else is going on? So the two main things that carnivore really helped me with were my gut health and my mental health. So growing up, I suffered from severe constipation. It was so bad. I would be, I'm talking, I'm going, I was going to the bathroom every few weeks. It was weeks apart. Uh, and that was something I dealt with for most of my life. And because of that, I then had an awful immune system. So I was sick all the time, constantly in the doctors getting a Z pack. I had really bad acne for my whole entire life until I started carnivore. I, and I always just had about 20 extra pounds of weight just around my stomach. And it would just always be around my stomach because I was literally just bloated and full of shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I can say shit. Um, so uh, I would always just have this extra weight around my stomach and I couldn't lose it unless I actually would just starve myself. So I tried in high school, I tried being anorexic. My parents caught on and would watch me eat. 
I then tried being bulimic and I then quickly realized that bulimia can rot your teeth Mm -hmm. and my smile was one of the only things I liked about myself. So I decided to not do that. And then I kind of just got depressed because I was like, I'm just meant to be fat then. And a lot of people would tell me it's my genetics, but deep down I knew I wasn't supposed to be fat. So I was just constantly looking for ways to get thinner. But back then in the nineties, in the early nineties, um, or the, not the early nineties, the late nineties, I'm not that old. Um, (laughs) every, all you knew was just starve yourself or eat fruits and vegetables or do these cleanses, these juice cleanses. Um, I would do apple fast where I would only eat apples for three days straight and things like that. And I would get skinny, but I would still be constipated. I would still be bloated. And then eventually I'd gain the weight back because I was malnourished. So it was just constantly getting skinny, getting fat, getting skinny, getting fat. And that lasted until I started carnivore. And then I, it, it, it's like a miracle. I, and it sounds, it sounds like too good to be true, but it really did fix it changed everything. And I I don't have to worry about food anymore. I don't have to starve myself. So that's the, that's the physical part of it. And then the mental part, I always suffered from really bad mood swings to where I, I thought it was genetic because my family kind of goes through the same thing too. So I didn't know if it was genetic or learned behavior, but then once I did start carnivore that balanced out too, to where I, now have a pretty steady mood all the time. I don't just flip out at the drop of a hat. Um, yes. So those are the two main things, my, my gut health and my mental health. <laughs> well, I just have a couple, I just have to come. You said you tried to be anorexic. I don't know if you try. I think that's more like you become, an, it's a disease process and you become anorexic or bulimia. You, you do go out and say, I'm going to be anorexic next week. Is that, is that how that went or how did that go? No. Yeah. So, and I don't want to say that to like offend anyone who, who suffered from anorexia, but so my situation is I've never really, I've never been emotionally attached to food. So I've never had a food addiction or anything like that. So I always looked at food as a tool, even when I was younger. So, so I knew I wanted to be skinny or I knew that I shouldn't be fat. And I knew that if I restricted my severely restricted my calories or just stopped eating altogether, I would get skinny because I've seen so many other girls do that. So I looked at it as a tool and, uh, and a way to get from point A to point B. It wasn't so much an emotional thing. It was a, I was like looking at it from a very logical perspective. And then when my parents saw that I wasn't eating, they figured it out and they would watch me eat. So it didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say I tried (laughs) because, because I thought it would be a good way to get skinny and it didn't work. So Mm -hmm. then I, I started throwing up after I would eat because I would, they would watch me and then I would go throw up. And then I realized that it rots your teeth. And I didn't want to do that. Did you ever, I mean, cause some people are looking at this saying, well, you know, you've got all this sort of disordered eating behavior order. And then some people consider, well, a carnivore diet is also a disordered eating behavior. It's restrictive. It's crazy. I mean, I'm just talking about the, the average person. Was there ever a point where you said, look, I'm just going to eat a balanced diet. I'm going to exercise and I'm going to watch how much I, I eat. Did you ever try that? Yes. And that was right before I started carnivore or for probably a few years before I started carnivore. So when, I, when I was 19, I realized that I shouldn't be eating gluten. So I cut gluten out and I was gluten-free for 10 years, still suffering from acne, still suffering from mood swings, still suffering from not being able to like really lose weight, but it helped a little. Mm-hmm. So I thought I was on the right track. H- helped a little in, then, what, in, in the regard of weight loss or gut health, or what, what do you mean it helped? It helped a little in regards to constipation. I, I was going more frequently, but it was still a week, two weeks in between. Uh, but it, it helped the constipation a little, but it didn't help anything else really. And so I stuck with that because I saw progress. And if you ever suffer from severe constipation, like, you know, you would do anything to not have to deal with that anymore. So I stuck with that. And then I, started eating healthy to where I was eating mostly fiber, 
fruits, like fruits and vegetables. I didn't eat a lot of gluten-free substitute things. I wasn't eating a ton of gluten-free breads and stuff like that. I just, I pretty much cut out bread out of my diet. So I was eating rice bowls and things like that and lean meat only. So very low fat diet and oatmeal. And I convinced myself somehow that I liked the oatmeal that didn't have any sugar in it because I knew it was healthier. So I, I would eat the oatmeal that was just plain gross oatmeal every morning and turkey bacon and mm. fish and chicken. And, <laughs> and I, so I was eating healthy and I couldn't lose any weight. I was working out about six days a week lifting heavy weights, doing a ton of cardio. My husband's in the military. So I was just constantly going to the gym with him working out and nothing was helping. And at that point is when I was just kind of hitting my wall of, I have no idea what to do now. I can't just keep starving myself for the rest of my life. And he, that's when he started looking into it and started researching and found the the carnivore diet. Turkey bacon, I think, is kind of like a crime against humanity. I'm not sure who invented turkey bacon, but it is it is something. That is, it yeah, is. I actually convinced myself that I liked turkey bacon, yeah. that I liked all of these things, and I, that I didn't like regular bacon. And then when I started carnivore and I tried regular bacon, it was like, oh, like the angels were singing. And then I couldn't put turkey bacon back in my mouth after that. I, and I... <laughs> Yeah. And I haven't missed a vegetable since I started carnivore. So I didn't actually love vegetables as much as I thought I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I never, I was never a vegetable fan. I can, I can honestly say that, that I don't miss them at all, but yeah, the Turkey, you know, I guess beef bacon's not a bad second compromise, but my gosh, that Turkey bacon stuff is just who, gosh, who wants that? So, um, so you go into carnivore now, I guess has your husband, did he go carnivore too? Or did he just kind of say, Hey, try this and you be the Guinea pig or what was it? What was the situation like? He went carnivore with me January 2020 World Carnivore Month. And then after that, he kind of went back to just eating what he normally eats Mm -hmm. because he doesn't have any major health issues. Mm -hmm. And it seems like pretty much everyone or a lot of people in the carnivore community, especially the people who stick with it for a long time, Mm -hmm. kind of have health issues that they have are just done dealing with and they are desperate and will try this crazy carnivore thing. Uh, And he didn't have any health issues. So he wasn't exactly extremely motivated to keep going with it as much as I was. So, and with the military, with traveling and MREs and things like that, you don't really get a, a lot of choice with what you're eating a lot of the time. So he believes in it. And he eats carnivore when he can, but when he can't, he'll go back to eating. Sure gross food <laughs> so you are you are in okinawa japan now uh, have, have you traveled a lot in the military as attached to your, with your husband have you been moving a lot of places so we originally from southern california then texas then went to north carolina for him to do the q course and stuff like that and then he got sent here for to okinawa so i've been just to those places and you've been carnivore for how much of this so at least two years prior to prior to japan right so Yeah. So I basically started carnivore January, 2020, and we were in Texas at that time. Mm -hmm. And then a few months later, we moved to North Carolina. Okay. Both are, both are pretty decent places to be carnivore. I mean, Texas certainly got a lot of good barbecue there. And then North Carolina's got some decent barbecue. Not as good as Texas in my view, but I'm, I'm biased on that. (laughs) I agree with you. <laughs> how are you? So how's Japan going? I mean, how, how is it hard to do? I mean, I imagine you can shop on the, I guess you have an exchange PX or something like that where you get most of your food. But I mean, if you go out and about downtown Okinawa, what is it like out there? Actually, it, I was pleasantly surprised because I was very nervous when, when we moved here and there is actually a lot of steak places out here, a lot of, uh, Japanese barbecue type places. Mm -hmm. We, our favorite place is called Yakiniku, which is Japanese barbecue. So they bring the meat to you raw Mm -hmm. and then you cook it on a little grill in front of you. Yeah. So, so that's where we usually go to eat. And we've had a harder time in mainland Japan finding places to eat. So when we go visit mainland, we usually just stick with McDonald's, which isn't uh, the 
ideal situation, but it's good, I guess, if you're in a pinch, but definitely not for long term. Yeah. But uh, yeah, mainland was harder to find find food places than Okinawa. Okinawa has amazing pork. The pork is amazing here. Mm-hmm. A ton of beef. And of course, they have a lot of carbs and sugars and stuff too, but we, ha- we haven't had an issue finding meat here. So it's been really nice. Yeah. I mean, according to Dan Butner in the blue zones, uh, in Okinawa, all they eat is, uh, purple sweet potatoes and, and a little scrap of, you know, maybe once in a while I have a scrap of fish, but that's, is that not consistent with what you actually observe? Not from what I've seen. There are purple sweet potatoes everywhere though. So mm-hmm. that there, even if you walk into like a home goods store, a hard, hardwood store type Home Depot thing, uh, there's sweet potatoes out front. Like mm-hmm. they have the red sweet or the purple sweet potatoes everywhere here. And they're very proud of them, but um, there is a lot of meat here too. And mm-hmm. from what I've seen, they eat a lot of meat and a lot of pork, especially mm-hmm. uh I think they're, I'm pretty sure Okinawa is known for their pork. I think they have an island around here somewhere where they raise pigs. I Don't quote me on that, but I, I think I've heard that. And um, yeah, so they do eat a lot of, a lot of meat, a lot of rice, a lot of sweets, but yes, a lot of, of meat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, um, so, you know, you've been on this now for three years. How has, how has your diet evolved over the three years? Have you excluded, reintroduced things or what's, what's it like, or what does your day to day look like now? My day to day is I pretty much since I started to, I've been eating two to three meals a day and I average two meals a day. Uh, and in the beginning I did not like fat. I, it was very hard for me because I grew up my dad had gout. So he was told he couldn't eat red meat. So we growing up would only eat white meat fit or white meat, chicken and fish. Um, so I was not used to eat eating fatty steak fat grossed me out. If I saw fat on a steak, I could not even look at it without losing my appetite. So I had to learn how to like steak. And I slowly evolved with that to where now I love eating steak and fat, the fattier, the better. And in the beginning, I also still used, I, I cheated a little and I, I used ketchup and A1 sauce and things like that before I started getting used to the flavor of just the meat. And I, so now I pretty much just eat meat and only use salt. I don't use any seasonings anymore and drink water. And I still do drink coffee though. That is the one thing that I have in my diet that is not carnivore. Yeah. And you'd mentioned you'd had this chronic constipation going to the bathroom, you know, once every two or three weeks, I guess you're anorexic and not eating anything that makes sense, but you know, maybe other things going on. Has carnivore impacted your bowel frequency? Is it improved? Is it, are you still suffering with constipation or what's going on with that? Cause a lot of people assume not having fiber in your diet is going to make you constipated. That's not my, been the experience that I've seen, but what is, what is your experience been? Yes. Uh, so yeah, growing up, the only thing doctors ever told me was eat more fiber, eat more fiber. And it seemed to only make the problem worse and worse. And the only thing that has helped me heal my gut and give me regular bowel movements is carnivore. And I haven't had really an issue since I started carnivore. Um, the only time that I've had an issue with that is if I eat too much fat. And then of course I'm going to have some diarrhea, but, um, that's not, that's just me eating too much fat. And you just, I think as you go with carnivore and as you start to learn more, you kind of realize how much fat your body can take and you kind of feel that and know where your limit is. Um, so I found my limit pretty quickly and haven't had an issue since with, I I go, I probably like every other day or something like that now, Mm -hmm. pretty consistently. I don't even think about it anymore, which is crazy because I, that's all that used to consume my mind because I would just be wondering when's the next time I'm going to go to the bathroom and, and just like feel my stomach would hurt to the touch. And that's all I could think about was just like, I need to go to the bathroom, but I can't. And now it's something that I don't even think about. Yeah, it looks like, I mean, I can't tell from, at least from the waist up, it looks like you're in, you look like you're in pretty good shape and have you gotten your weight to where you want it and everything? Are you pretty happy where you are now? Yeah, I'm pretty consistent, stable. I say, uh, when I do more cardio and stuff, I'm lose more weight. Um, and then when I weight lift, I gain some weights, but I stick between like 130, 140 pounds in, in there. Um, pretty consistently, just depending on my, how my workouts go around what I'm eating. 
Yeah. And are you finding it difficult to work out without carbohydrates added to your diet? Or are you doing okay with that? I haven't had any issues with that at all. Uh, I've heard so many people say they need some carbs when they work out and my energy has been completely fine when I work out. I'm not doing CrossFit or anything like that. Um, but I did used to, I got, I got into running last year and I was running about 50 miles a week and I still didn't add any carbs into my diet. Um, so I was running a lot and I just didn't feel like I needed to. I, I, I would have, if I felt like I, my energy was lacking, but I felt completely fine. And I've never had to add any extra carbs into my diet for my workouts. So yeah, that, that hasn't been my experience at all. Are you getting any, uh, uh, pushback from anybody around you? That's, you know, like on friends, family, other folks saying you're doing this and thinking you're going to kill yourself or anything like that. So my, my parents thought I was a little cuckoo in the beginning, but they, let me do what I wanted to do. And then my dad's doctor, he was diagnosed diabetic and his doctor thankfully was one of the good ones. And he told him to go on a keto diet and start eating more red meat and less sugar. And then the whole gout situation came up and the doctor said, no, we, we just tell people to stop eating red meat instead of sugar, because it's easier for them to give up red meat than it is to give up sugar. And my dad said, you, you're telling me that I could have been eating steak this whole time. And, <laughs> and, um, so he did the keto kind of did more carnivore and they started listening to me more and thought I was less crazy. And he reversed his diabetes. He hasn't had a gout flare up since he started eating more meat and cut out sugar. Yeah. So, um, my, they thought I was a little crazy, but they tried it. They kept listening. I read them. Um, they have your book actually I bought their, your book and they have it. And then I got, um, Ben Bickman's book mm -hmm. and and I read their, that book to them because I knew they wouldn't sit down and read it. And that opened their mind to of, of why we get sick, that book. So um, they're open-minded about it. The rest of my family think I'm crazy, but I'm not extremely close to any of them. So uh, that, that doesn't bug me so much. And my friends aren't carnivore. They think I'm crazy too, but oh, well. <laughs> You said, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought you said at some point you were suffering a little bit from depression. Maybe is that, did you ever mention that? Yeah. Cause yeah, you definitely. seem, you seem really happy now. I mean, I'm just, uh, I mean, you're smiling and laughing. So, I mean, I'm assuming this diet has, has that had an impact on your mental health? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's really helped my mental health. I, I definitely, I hated myself before and cause I, I felt like I was trapped in a body that I knew I shouldn't be in. And I hated everything about myself. I had really bad acne. I couldn't lose weight. Um, my moods were just uncontrollable. I'd be extremely happy and then just extremely mad. Um, so I didn't want, I, at one point too, when I, I think I was like 13, I, I tried to kill myself because I just hated my life so much. And I just found pills in the, um, the medicine cabinet upstairs. And I don't even know what they were, but I just had seen on TV that people just can take a bunch of pills and they die. So, um, I, and I don't think I necessarily wanted to die. It's, it was weird. Like I, I just wanted to escape. I just wanted to get out of my body and get out of the body I was trapped in. So I definitely suffered from depression and all of that. And <laughs> I was just looking for a solution. And um, then carnivore changed my mental health so, so much. I no longer have crazy mood swings. I'm no longer depressed. I am happy. Like I, this, I am happy and bubbly and, and giddy and, I just feel excited about the future and I have hope and it's just, it's crazy. It's, it sounds so crazy how much food can impact your mental health. And I, that is probably the biggest surprise about carnivore is that I, I had no idea that it could complete, it made me into a different person. A lot of, a lot of women seem to be under the impression that having a bloated stomach around eating, especially is kind of a normal thing. And have you noticed any change with regard to that? 
Yeah, I I was told that getting bloated after your meal and having your food baby was normal. Uh, but no, you don't get bloated on carnivore. I mean, if you're eating a lot, so like your stomach is full, but it's not like that bloated, gross feeling. And then you don't feel heavy afterward. You don't feel like you have to go take a nap afterward. Um, I For Thanksgiving last year or the year before, I don't remember, but we did... Uh, a turkey trot with my sister in Las Vegas. And then we went to her house and I ate a ton of ribs. I, I think I ate more than anybody there and I wasn't bloated at all. And, and everyone else around me is like, Oh my gosh, I need a nap. I need to go lay down. And I was ready to go run another 5k. I could have ran another 5k right after eating all of those ribs because it just it doesn't, it doesn't affect you the same as carbs and, and things like that. Did you know, do you notice any difference, uh, say around like menstrual type stuff? Has that changed? Like, I mean, some women have really bad, you know, premenstrual syndrome or, you know, uh, dysphoria, things like that. Cycle irregularity, fertility issues, any, any things like that for specific to, to women's health? So before I started carnivore, I would get really, really bad cramps to the point where I would just shake uncontrollably because I was in so much pain and eventually just start throwing up because I was in so much pain. And, um, now I don't really get any cramps. Like if, if I do, they're very minimal to where the point to the point where if I'm doing something else, I completely forget about it. Um, and I haven't suffered from any sort of bad cramps like I used to. Um, the only, I feel like the only side effect or the only PMS symptom that I get is like, I don't know if it's TMI, but my boobs get bigger. And that's basically the only thing that happens when I, before I start my period and when I'm on my period and I'm not mad about that. (laughs) (laughs) It's not some, someone, someone have a lot of pain associated with that. So if that's not the case, has it changed? Like, um, how about like, you know, I don't know, relationship wise, or, I mean, cause you know, I, 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 there's, I think that food impacts our mental health. I think it makes impacts our emotions and how we relate with people. And I think when you're getting good nu- nutrition, you get, has it, has, has it impacted your relationship with either your, your, your family or other people around you in any way? Yes, I am much more patient than I used to be. And, uh, it's definitely helped my relationship with my husband. I used to, we used to fight a lot cause I would just get mad about the dumbest things. Um, and I don't anymore. And I'm so glad that he decided to put up with me <laughs> and I feel bad for how I acted before, but, um, I'm definitely more patient and I, and I want to be around people more before carnivore. I was kind of like a recluse and didn't really want to have friends. I didn't do a lot of things. Um, and I just didn't want to be around people. I get kind of anxiety when I would be in big crowds and I was very insecure. So I didn't want to be out and about and have people looking at my skin and things like that. So, um, it's helped with that to where now I want to have relationships and I want to go hang out with people. And, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely helped relationships in that regard. So you're less, less inclined to yell at them for leaving the toilet seat up. Then. <laughs> yeah, which that's not, that's not one of the ones that I would get mad about. That one never, that one never bugged me or the toilet paper. Yeah. I, I never got, I never cared about which way the toilet paper goes. Yeah. It'd be like really dumb things like, like a piece of trash on the ground or something mm-hmm. like that. I'm like, why can't you throw that away? And just dumb things like that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it makes sense, you know. I mean, I had a roommate in. I remember I had a roommate in medical school, and I remember he walking around peeling a banana. And he just let the banana peel drop on the ground like it was nothing. I'm like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he was an interesting guy for sure. I have to say, what um, did you have any problems with this diet? Any transition problems? Any? Do you suffer? Did, did it? Any? Any negatives so far that you've experienced? I pretty much had a great transition and I went cold Turkey too. I was eating kind of like healthy before. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but if I did have any 
Cause people generally get like diarrhea when they start carnivore, but I think I was just so constipated that even if I had some sort of like issue with that, I just didn't notice because my body was just so constipated. So diarrhea would have been a welcomed reprieve. But, um, so I, my transition was pretty, pretty easy. I don't remember anything bad happening. The only thing that has happened so far through my carnivore journey is that I was getting leg cramps, um, especially around the time when I started running a lot. So I feel like that had something to do with it, but I just started drinking more water and they went away. So I've never like had to supplement or anything on carnivore. I just eat meat, drink water, use salt, and haven't really had any issue other than How leg you, cramps. You, you mentioned you had some acne and you were you kind of embarrassed by the way your skin looked and things like that. How has carnivore affected, say, your hair, your nails, your skin? Um, you know, a lot of women spend, a, well, not just women, men too, spend a lot of money on creams and potions and powders and all this stuff to try to make their skin look better. How does how has it impacted your, just your, out, your, your outer skin and nails and stuff like that, hair and such? Uh, my hair, my nails, my skin so much healthier. And I don't have to use all of that stuff anymore. Uh, I don't, I use water on my face. I don't use any soap or cleansers anymore. I wash my face with water. And then I do have some tallow lotion that I'll put on my skin. That is beef tallow. Um, so that's the only thing that I basically use for my skin. And then I don't really use shampoo anymore. It, it my I'm like I have less body odor. So if unless we go work out really hard, I don't really <laughs> I don't really wear deodorant because I don't need it. Um, just on a regular daily basis, it, it, um, if I'm not sweating, um, and I my hair is great. I shampoo and condition my hair maybe once every few weeks now, and it's fine. Um, I yeah, so it it's definitely helped all of that stuff and made me realize that I, it saved me money in that regard where I don't have to buy all of those fancy lotions and potions and creams because I realized that, um, what you put in your body kind of, <laughs> uh, it yeah. makes you smell or not. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting because you think about humans must've really smelled bad 500 years ago before they invented deodorants. And I mean, I don't know, I guess perfumes have been around for longer than that, but you know, it's interesting to think that, uh, you know, we had to figure out how we survived without all the modern sort of hygiene accoutrements, I suppose, that and, and maybe we need them now because we're eating a worse diet. What, you mentioned you just drink some water. Do you ever worry about electrolytes or do you find that you have to take a, a extra sodium or anything like that? No. And I, I don't know if I'm just weird in that, in that regard, because I do know a lot of carnivores that use electrolytes and take supplements. I've never taken supplements. I've never used electrolytes. I wouldn't be opposed to trying them, but I just don't feel like I need them. I don't, I don't really have any symptoms to where I, I'm concerned and think I need supplements. Um, and I don't, I'm not feeling low energy. I, so I just haven't incorporated them because I haven't needed them, which is like the same with carbs too. I just haven't incorporated them because I feel great. The, with just doing what I'm doing. Yeah. There's no point. I mean, if, if you're feeling great, there's no point in adding to that. And so you're not taking a bunch of vitamins or supplements or so, vitamin C or any of that stuff. You're just, what it, so you're eating, what, it, what, what are you eating again? Just, just meat, basically eggs, dairy. What was the deal? Yeah. So I am eating meat, um, all sorts of meat. I'm not a huge fan of fish, so I don't eat fish very often. Uh, and except scallops. I do enjoy scallops, but, um, so I'm eating meat, mostly beef, a little bit of chicken and then eggs and then some dairy. I don't eat a lot of dairy because if I eat too much, I do start to break out. So I, but I have a little bit. And, um, when I do have coffee right now, I have black coffee, but sometimes I'll put heavy cream in my coffee. So I have some of that, but mostly just beef is, is what I eat salt and salt, a lot of salt. <laughs> That's right. And it's early in the morning where you are. Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. It is eight thirty six. Eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. So yeah. Open out, out in Okinawa. Um, have you, uh, have you, I mean, I can't imagine Japan. They have a big, huge 
plant-based push out there are, are there people like telling everybody in J japan they need to go plant-based are you hearing anything about there maybe it's in japanese and you would never know but i mean are you seeing much of that i have seen one grocery store have one little section of plant-based meat mm -hmm. and i've seen two restaurants that have that say vegan options available on the menu in English though. So I'm assuming it's for the American patrons, not the Japanese. I do know that some Japanese people are vegan, but from what I've seen, it's, there's not a huge push here and they like their meat here. Yeah. As, as they should, <laughs> as the normal people should. Um, are you, uh, you know, like I said, you're, you're doing so well with this. You're, you're, you're enjoying it. Um, have you experimented with bringing other things back in from time to time or, or what do you, what do you, are you just not interested in that? So I, um, will sometimes have like a handful of blueberries or something like that. Um, but that's very rare. Maybe once every six months, maybe if I, if I'm wanting something like that, but it's very rare that that happens. Um, but I'm, I'm a, I'm the kind of person that I can take one bite of something and like be satisfied and not, um, go into like a binge eating thing. Um, so I've not, I haven't really had any issue with, um, that, and I haven't wanted to add anything in. So if I, if I do like, if I do want something, I'll eat those handful of blueberries and then be done and be fine. But for the most part, I'm not craving anything. I don't want anything. I just want meat. <laughs> I just, I'm craving meat. That's all. That's pretty much um, all it is. And, and so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. I, I, I get it. I feel the same way. I was definitely looking forward to what I, what I had for breakfast this morning not really hungry anymore. So, um, do you find that, uh, you know, uh, you, cause there's a lot of, not a lot, but there are many women, particularly young women that do suffer from various types of eating disorder, whether it's, you know, uh, anorexia, bulimia, binge eating disorder, and probably several others there. Do you feel that the compulsions, I don't know if you even suffered from those, but, uh, I have seen some women who have come from that background saying that, a, a, a carnivore diet or an animal-based diet has been very, very helpful in their recovery. Can you see where that would be helpful? Yeah, definitely. Before I started carnivore, I was obsessed with counting calories and I would not, when I was trying to lose weight and I would restrict my calories, I wouldn't go above 800 calories a day. Um, and I just was obsessed with just like keeping it at least under a thousand too. Um, so I counted calories. I was obsessed with calories and I would, um, do like a give and take kind of thing to where if I ate this ice cream, I wouldn't eat anything for breakfast and I wouldn't eat until like dinner the next day or kind of thing. I would like barter with myself of, I can eat this bad thing. If I, if I restrict my calories here, because then it'll balance out because everything is just calories. The only thing that matters is, is the number. Um, and then with carnivore, I, when I realized that you don't have to count calories, you can just eat the food and eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. I stopped counting calories. I haven't counted calories. I haven't tracked any of my food since I started carnivore. Um, so it's been very freeing in that regard. Um, and I don't ever want to track or count again. Um, so it's really helped him with that. As far as um, like binging and things like that, I, I never really had an issue because I never, like I was saying before, I, I never looked at food as like an emotional thing. It was always just, um, a tool. I always looked at food logically. Like if I eat this, this, and this, this will happen. Um, so I was able to just look at it logically again. And, um, so I never had like, a emotional, um, a th disorder with food, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Um, do you, uh, do you interact much with the other spouses? I know that in some places when you're deployed, a lot of people, they kind of because you're in a place and no one speaks the language, right? And you're, I mean, I don't, I mean, I assume a lot of people in Japan still be, can speak English, but I mean, you feel out of your culture. So do you interact with a lot of the other folks there? And I know there's some concern around the military where there's so many people in the military out of shape, they can't even fill their recruits, you know, and there's a lot of, there's still even a lot of people struggling with weight and particularly spouses, as I recall. Do you see that? And do you ever have discussions on healthy diets and things like that? Yeah. So 
before I even was carnivore, my, when my husband went on a rotation in Korea, um, he, I was kind of letting myself go and just having a big pity party for myself. And he, um, (laughs) he's never been the kind of guy that's going to just tell you what you want to hear. And he told me, you better not be fat when I get back. So, um, I, when I started starving myself and I, and I wasn't fat when he got back, but then shortly after that, we did find, um, the carnivore diet, but, um, yeah, there is definitely a, uh, a type of person that is a military wife <laughs> that you, that you can, ugh, I don't want to be mean, but yes, military wives are generally overweight and there, it's very rare to see someone, one of them that is in shape. Um, and especially you're seeing a lot more military men or, and the women too, but th- that are out of shape. And it's kind of sad. Like uh, my husband's, my husband's a green break. He's supposed to be one of the top elite um, or they're supposed to be like the elite fighting force. And a lot of them have just like these carb belly beer bellies. And I'm like, Oh, does, and he's, he's in very good shape. Um, but it's just kind of sad because even the elite in the U S military are kind of letting themselves go. And it's, it's a, a bit disheartening. That, that, <laughs> that is pretty sad I think that you're the, the <laughs> finest you have to offer and you're walking around with you know 20 pounds extra gut on you that doesn't make sense so i guess if they're out for a deployment there's no food that'll 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 serve them for a little while but uh beyond that yeah you watch these uh, survival shows and usually somebody some a lot of people will go into that and they'll just get as fat as they possibly can before they get there so they can kind of live on their own body fat and outlast everybody else but i don't think that's a strategy there Um, do you, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, you've been doing this now, do you ever, uh, well, what is your favorite? Like, do you have a favorite thing you like to eat? Is there like, I mean, some people, for me, it's like ribeye steaks, but I don't know. Do you have a favorite? Definitely steaks. I do like ribeye. Ribeye is probably my favorite as well. Um, but it has to be cooked on the grill like over an open flame. And I could, I think I could eat that every single day because, um, it here in Okinawa, it rains all of the time. So we can't always go outside and use the grill. So we'll put the, we'll put steaks in the air fryer and it's just not the same. So I couldn't eat steaks every day if they were made in the air fryer or made in a skillet, things like that. But if it was over an open flame and a good ribeye, good fatty ribeye, I think I could eat that every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can see that. I I definitely agree with that. Um, as far as, you know, you said initially you were, you, it took you a while to, to be able to, to, to handle, you know, either psychologically or physiologically eating more fat. Um, are you somebody now that is lots of fat? Are you still kind of moderate in your fat? There's some people that really like to do lots and lots of fat. We're talking 80%, even maybe even 90% fat. Are you more kind of more protein and and some fat or what, what is your preference? I tried the 80, 20 fat carnivore Mm -hmm. diet and I did not enjoy it. I pretty much just gained weight and I didn't, (laughs) I didn't feel good anymore. I didn't really, I was starting to not like my reflection again. So the 80, 20 ratio didn't really work for me. So I just started, um, but I was eating, I was eating a lot. I was adding butter to everything, cooking butter and stuff, eat, drinking fatty lattes like twice a day. So I was, I was eating a lot of fat. Um, so now I just prioritize protein. So I think I'm probably around 60, 40 at this point. And the, that is where I feel the most comfortable and that my body seems to like the most and my mental health seems to like the most as well. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. And, um, do you, uh, you know, as far as, uh, well, you said you're going to be there for the next two years. I mean, I've seen, you know, and I guess, you know, I guess your, your husband's far enough and he's not like you, know, when you first get into the military, you know, and you start out and you've got, you know, it, it's tough to even make a living there. Are you guys, is it hard to afford, is this that impo- hard to afford on a military salary? No, <laughs> which I feel very blessed to, to about that, that, and I don't, I don't have, I don't work. I don't have a, like a normal nine to five job because when he, when he was gone, um, it was very hard on us because I was working. And when I would have a day off, um, he would be working when, and then vice versa. So we never saw each other. So um, when he started making enough money to where I, he could take care of me and I didn't have to go to work, I did 
stay home. And now I'm a little housewife. Um, we don't have any kids yet, so I'm, I'm working on that, but, um, yeah, de- the military salary has definitely been good to us and we haven't had an issue with, with buying things. I, I do. I cannot wait to get to the United States though, and be able to, um, buy like really good high quality meats and things like that, or try raw dairy and, and stuff like that. I'm really excited about that, but right. Yeah. Right now in Okinawa, we haven't had an issue. Well, I mean, Japan is obviously known for their specific, you know, Wagyu or the Kobe beef, or the different ver- ver- varieties of this high end. Have you been able to sample some of that since you've been there? Yeah. And I feel like, oh, I feel like I don't have the right answer to this, but I think that Wagyu is overrated. Um, it's very expensive and it's doesn't, it's not not worth it, in my opinion. Uh, we've we've tried wagyu uh, very often here, just because we're like, there, there's no way that it, that we feel this way because everyone loves wagyu, everyone's obsessed with it. But every time we buy it and we eat it, it's just not satisfying. We'd we'd rather have a ribeye, just a big fatty juicy ribeye. And I'm always hungry a couple hours later after I eat the wagyu. Um, so yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it, and I don't know if it's just we're buying the wrong kind or what, but, um, I, I don't think it's worth the the cost. I'd rather just get a cheaper ribeye. <laughs> yeah, well, certainly, I mean, they are quite expensive and, you know, it's, it is something that, you know, you'd say, is it, is it, is it 10 times as delicious as a steak that would cost 10 times? And the answer clearly is no. So that's fair enough there. Um, Pork. Now, is pork, you know, obviously you're in a place where pork, you know, in Asia, for people that don't know, pork is the number one eaten meat in the world because of Asia, largely. And everybody in Asia, or not everybody, most people in Asia tend to eat a lot of pork. And I don't know if it's just that they've been, that's what they've been used to. I think beef is becoming more and more prominent over there. Uh, but are you eating much pork in your diet? Yeah, I, the pork here is very, very good. Um, it's the best pork I've ever had. They don't have bacon here. So I still have to get bacon from the U S commissary if I want some bacon, but, uh, the, the pork, we, we actually haven't actually bought pork a lot at the grocery store to cook at our house. But when we go out to eat, we will primarily eat the pork on the menu because it's just, it's so good. I don't even know how to explain it, but the pork here is very, very good. (laughs) And you haven't had any, do you, I mean, do you notice some people, some people say they don't tolerate pork and maybe it's the the different types of pork or the quality of the pork, but any negative reactions to when you do consume it? No, I haven't really experienced any negative reactions with really any kind of meat that I've eaten, which has been really nice because I do know that some people are really, really sensitive to like histamines and things like that. Um, But no, I haven't had an issue. I just, the the only things I've had issue with are non-carnivore things like different seasonings, like garlic and, and things like that. I have to cut out. So I just do salt now, but just with, as far as meat goes, no, I haven't had an issue. Some people are very quiet about what they do. Uh, you have a social media account. I'm just finding somebody has texted it to me. So I'm looking at it right now. So you've got 34,000 followers on Instagram. So I, and you're posting pictures of you eating meat. So what has been the reception to that? Are you getting some hate mail? Are you get? Or is it mostly positive? Or, or what? Or, or how is that going for you? It depends on the platform. So on Instagram, I do get a lot of negative comments, um, but it's mostly positive because I'm in the carnivore community, and carnivores are awesome and they're very supportive. So the the love is much greater than the hate on Instagram. YouTube, there's a lot more negative and less positive. Um, and so, so I'm not, I don't focus as much on YouTube because the it is kind of hard to to deal with the hate sometimes. And just the the when you're in, involved in the carnivore community past a certain point, you kind of forget that people still think that cholesterol is bad and people still think that red meat is going to rot in your colon and, and people still believe stuff like that. And so then when you get hit with a negative comment of someone saying, Oh, you're going to die of scurvy, it kind of like takes you back. And like, you're like, Oh wow. People really still think that they're going to die of scurvy if they eat meat. Um, so, so sometimes I do get a lot of negative, a lot of really dumb comments that I know that are dumb now, but I used to think the same thing. Yeah. Mostly on Instagram, it's mostly encouragement and positive. (laughs) 
is, but it's just dumb things. Like, cause you know, I know it's the cholesterol is not bad. I know I'm not going to die if I eat too much red meat. Um, so those kind of like roll off my back, but it kind of can get overwhelming when people just like say the same thing and over and over. And you're just like, yeah, it's been debunked. Right. Yeah. You get a lot of the people out there saying that, you know, you're a, you're a murderer and an animal abuser and blah, 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 that, that, that stuff that did, you know, all it does is sort of indicate that that person's probably mentally ill if they think that they, you know, you just think that 99% of the people on earth are abusing, rapists, murdering, slave holding people. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, it's just, that, that's, that's kind of a mental illness to have that outlook. And so, yeah, I was looking at, I was just kind of perusing and I saw you had something caught my eye. You were making something called, uh, slutty eggs and beef suet and i was just wondering what made the eggs slutty because i'd never heard that term before so. <laughs> um so slutty eggs are something that um lady carnivory um coined okay. from the egg slut restaurant yeah so she so she's coined that that name of, of slutty eggs but basically you just have a pan and you don't preheat it or anything. You just have a cold pan and you put your eggs and, and butter in the pan and then you turn it to medium heat and you just whisk them until they, until moist curds form. And then once it gets a little moist, um, you take it off the heat and the, <laughs> and the eggs are still kind of wet. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are delicious. The best scrambled eggs that I've ever had. Cause I used to, I grew up eating really dry mm-hmm. overcooked scrambled eggs. Mm-hmm. So so when slutty eggs entered my life, I, I have never cooked an egg differently other than sunny side up and things like that. But if I'm scrambling it, it's going to be slutty. <laughs> Very good. And how, how many, how many eggs are you consuming typically? And are you not eating them every day or, or how often do you eat them? No, I don't eat them every day. I will, I will have like food moods mm-hmm. of where I'll want more beef mm-hmm. or want more chicken or want more pork, want more eggs. Um, so sometimes I'll just be in an egg mood and I will have them pretty consistently. And then sometimes I just won't want eggs and I won't buy them and I won't eat them until I'll start craving them again. So I pretty much listen to what my body's craving, what my body's wanting. I, right now I don't have any eggs in my house. Um, and I'm not really, I don't miss them. So um, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely just go off what I'm craving. And right now I'm not in an egg mood. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Cause there's, I, I know there's some people out there saying that eggs are so bad for you because of vitamin A toxicity. And I, 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 I should probably respond to that at some point, but, but anyway, it's good. Uh, so share your social media cause we're, we're coming to the end of our time and I want to make sure if, if people, you know, if, if you're interested in having people to follow what you're talking about, where do they go? So my Instagram is just jessalyn.randall at our, on Instagram. And it's just J-E-S-S-A-L-Y-N-R-A-N-D-L-E. And then um, for YouTube, I have a channel with my friend Serena called the Carnivore Revolution. And um, yeah, and then I do, I make t-shirts um, for, I have like a nutrient dense teas account and I make like merch for meat eaters type stuff. Um, so I do that too. If you want to follow that and get some cool merch, mm-hmm. but um, what yeah, is, that's basically. What, what is the shirt you're wearing say today? It says carnivore or something. Carnivore, carnivore revolution. revolution. Yeah, very good. Very good. Viva la revolution. Very good. Okay. Here's something that uh, it's, that this will, this will timestamp this, but France or Morocco tomorrow in the world cup. Are you thinking about that? I'm sure you're, I'm sure you don't even care. You probably don't even know what's happening, right? <laughs> no, I, I we don't have we don't really have TV either. Um, we don't watch a lot of TV. Of yeah. course, we have a TV, and sometimes we'll watch Netflix, but pr- we don't watch a lot of sports or TV. Um, and then the sports we did watch, we were weird, and we liked tennis mm-hmm. and hockey. Those yeah. were two sports that me and my husband really enjoy watching, which are not popular sports, I don't think. But um, tennis is really entertaining. So, But I don't know anything about soccer. <laughs> Very good. That's okay. That's okay. No big deal. All right. All right. Well, Justin, it's just it's been great chatting with you. Thank you so much for doing this. Enjoy your next two years in Okinawa. And uh, when you get back home, hopefully you'll have a nice, whatever, big old prime rib or something like that. So thank you so much. For us, you guys, thank you. We'll be back tomorrow morning for our regular scheduled meeting. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye now. Hey, folks. It's Dr. Sean Baker here. If you guys are enjoying these success stories, well, you can become your own success story. You can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet. 
You can sign up for a free 30-day trial and get started today. We're looking forward to supporting you. Our community is wonderful, and we'd love to see your success.